A Mucky Business with Tim Farron. Hello, I'm Tim Farron and welcome to the show which delves into the mucky business of politics through the eyes of Christians. Now, you might think that politics is tainted by compromise and sin, and of course you would be right, but then again, so is everything else. And I think we should be praying in an informed way for our brothers and sisters who operate in and around the world of politics. Today, we'll be joined by not one, not two, but three guests who are all at the very beginning of their career working within politics. We'll find out what drew them in, what their ambitions are, and what impact their faith has in their thinking when it comes to their careers. But first, last week, we marked one year since Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. His intention for Russia's special military operation was to take Ukraine in three days, but he was not prepared for Ukrainian resistance embodied in the dignified and dogged defiance of President Zelensky. The West has imposed economic sanctions and supplied weapons to Ukrainian troops. For Ukraine, the world has been turned upside down. There have perhaps been 100,000 Ukrainian military casualties and more than 8,000 civilian deaths following the shelling of towns and cities. The true numbers may be much, much higher, with Ukraine's leading war crimes prosecutor saying that he feared 100,000 civilians may have lost their lives in the last 12 months. As Ukrainian troops take back ground, mass graves are being uncovered and many people are still missing. Thousands of ordinary people have been uprooted from their homes and their lives. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees estimates 8 million Ukrainians have fled the country and another 6 million are displaced within it. We have welcomed those fleeing here. More than 160,000 Ukrainians have come to the UK to live with host families through two sponsorship schemes. Some receive financial support, depending on which scheme they arrive on, but the strains are beginning to show. Many of the people who come here from Ukraine are deeply traumatised and it is difficult for many to find work that reflects the qualifications they hold or the jobs that they did back in Ukraine. Sponsor families are increasingly struggling to afford to continue hosting, especially with the rising cost of living. According to a new report from the Red Cross, more than 4,000 Ukrainian families are now at risk of homelessness within the UK, finding it hard to find rented accommodation or pay the upfront costs required. Most people simply want to go home. In addition, Christian charity Care has issued a warning that Ukrainian refugees continue to be at real risk from human traffickers seeking to exploit their vulnerability. But there is no sign of this conflict ending and it may yet escalate. The Ministry of Defence estimates that 200,000 Russian troops have been killed or wounded since the start of the invasion. But Putin is playing a long game and has no intention of backing down Meanwhile, the West is trying to offer support to Ukraine without provoking a new world war. For those of us who grew up in the shadow of the Cold War, there are ominous echoes of a threat that we hoped had passed. The language of the leaders is evocative of those years. Biden speaks of standing up for democracy against aggression. Putin accuses the West of using Ukraine as a battering ram to attack Russia. And last week, Russia pulled back from the last remaining nuclear arms control treaty with America. Looking at this conflict, it is easy to lose hope and lose heart or to develop compassion fatigue as the dreadful news keeps on coming. But we know that Christ offers us an eternal hope that is not affected by our earthly struggles. We know that all great empires tumble and fall eventually. But how can we best continue to pray for those caught up in the conflict and its consequences? These prayer suggestions are drawn from organisations supporting Ukrainians on the ground, the Langham Partnership, Tear Fund, and Christian aid. So first, let us keep praying for the war to end. Even if we see no way through, we know that nothing is impossible for God. Let's pray that leaders on both sides will be filled with wisdom, compassion, and a desire for peace, that they will seek to de-escalate tensions and restore global security. Let's also pray for justice for both the aggressor and their victims. Let us pray for all those affected by the war, for protection and the provision of supplies for those still in Ukraine, and for safety, welcome and support for those who have fled abroad. We pray for healing from physical and emotional wounds. Let's pray for long-term reconstruction and restoration of this country, which has been torn apart by this war. Let's pray for the Ukrainian church, for those who are now so weary after a year of working with their devastated communities. 
Let's pray for the chaplains ministering to the troops and the counselors offering psychological aid for light in the darkness, wisdom and strength. Thank God that churches are growing and people in Ukraine are turning to Christ. Let's finish by praying from Psalm 31 verses 1 to 2 for the Ukrainian people. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Amen. A Mucky Business with Tim Farron. And so to our guests this week, plural, we have Nat Taylor, Mim Schluter, Jonathan Akindature, all of whom work for MPs in and around Parliament and came into Parliament, into their work through schemes that are for young people and for young Christians. So we're going to start with, with Nat. First of all, um, wonderful to have you with us. Nat, you work for Andrew Lewis, as the Conservative MP for Northampton South. Tell us first a little bit about how you came to faith. I grew up in a Christian home. My dad's a vicar. But to be, to be frank, I, I found church rather dull for quite a long time. I'm sure my dad would be delighted to hear that. So I, I kind of ticked along, certainly called myself a Christian, uh, but didn't particularly find it very interesting. And then when I left school um, to go to university, uh, I think that was the first time I was confronted with the, uh, the idea of faith being um, not just you know, what you, where you grow up, a familial experience, but something where I actually had to make the decision myself. Um, I was, basically, I was confronted with the idea of what faith really looks like. And I wrestled with that for a bit in the first year of university, but I basically came to what I think is the unavoidable conclusion that, that my faith um, is living out what I always believed to be true all through that time. And so, so ever since that first year of university, I've been trying to do that as, as best as I can with varying degrees of success. Um, but that faith that I grew up with, um, I think I really started to put into practice into every facet of my life and um, come university. So they're fairly short, but um, encouraging, hopefully. And so tell us a little bit now, we're, we're going to talk later on in, in this uh, programme about the scheme that you've been on, what brought you into Parliament. But let's just skip past that for the moment and tell us a little bit about what you do working with Andrew Lua, the MP for Northampton South. What does your, what does your job look like? Yeah, so I'm a parliamentary assistant. I work in a small office with Andrew, so there's a few of us here. Um, and because it's a small office, we have uh, the joy of being able to muck in and all sorts of things from, from po possibly the most mon mundane where I will make a cup of tea for the office. And I'll go out and get the tea bags and all that um, to, the, to the slightly more thrilling where I get to assist in writing speeches, um, which he has has quoted in Parliament. It's always a surreal experience when you hear the words that you've written and being read out in the House of Commons um, and all the stuff in between, helping organise meetings trying to get to those meetings, um, making sure Andrew's at those meetings in time, um, which for MPs can be um, a challenge at times. Uh, but, but all in between that, a whole range of incredible experiences, um, really just assisting where I can. Wonderful. Well, now we're going to come back to you in a little while and move on next to, to Mims. Now, Mims Shooter, you work for Danny Kruger, who's the MP for yeah. Devices. And uh, so tell me a little bit about, in the first place, your coming to faith and how you became a Christian. Similarly to that, I grew up in a ministry household. So my parents actually, when I was four, moved out to South Africa, um, where I joined them for um, a lot of my upbringing. And so, yeah, I was always surrounded um, by this idea that God existed. And I think that um, I didn't ever doubt that. I think I always knew that God existed and I always um, had a relationship with him. I think that um, yeah, growing up and exploring faith for myself, I would say when I was about 13, that was the moment that I realized that this God that I believed in had actually made himself known even more personally through Jesus. And I think that was kind of the first moment that I sort of actively took on my personal relationship with Jesus, who I got to know more personally throughout my faith journey by reading about who he was and his life. And I think through that, I've grown in that relationship with him um, which has very much influenced my relationship with others so I'd say always knew God knew he existed um, but when I was about 13 having a real personal experience of who God was and making that decision for myself despite having kind of grown up a ministry family where that was the norm mm. so yeah thanks Mims now 
this is a, a program on the radio or a podcast, so we don't do visuals, but I can see you and I can see that Nat and Mims are in parliamentary offices and Mims, yours looks a lot bigger. Um, so I, I, does that tell us anything? But in any event, tell us a little bit about what you do with, with Danny. Yeah, so it's funny you mentioned that. This office is usually only occupied by me. So I, I am Danny's parliamentary assistant. Unfortunately for me as a people person, there aren't many other people um, who come into this office. I work for Danny. I'm his parliamentary assistant. That looks like managing the diary, uh, answering emails. Yeah, anything that's parliamentary focused. So it might be room booking. It might be event planning. Um, I think my kind of fun, my most fun job is doing the tech. Um, which I think I'd like to say I've become a self-proclaimed expert at working out the HDMI and setting it up to the screens and making sure that everything's running smoothly um, and yeah getting laptops fixed if they break that kind of thing. Um, similar to that I'm a tea carrier sometimes a waitress um, and yeah I do also other things kind of like research, writing, video editing, media. So I think sort of whatever needs doing, I will similarly um, to use uh, Nat's phrase, muck in and help where I can and just, yeah, serve Danny and whatever practical needs come up on the day to day. And I think what I love is no no day is the same. That's kind of what I do. Mims, thanks very much. Uh, Jonathan, you're talking to us from the constituency because you work for Florence Eshalomi, who's the MP for Labour MP for Vauxhall. Yeah. You did work for, uh, for, for uh, Stephen Timms last year uh, through the Buxton programme. We'll talk about the programme in a little while. But tell us a little bit, first of all, about your coming to faith and then let's find out what you do. Thanks, uh, thanks Tim. So I grew up in a Christian household as well. Um, I attended a, a church called Christ Apostolic Church, which is the first Pentecostal church in Nigeria. Um, in the 80s and 90s, they all came over uh, to the United Kingdom. So I grew up, grew up in the church. Um, I saw God move a lot at a young age. I was under a lot of um, something we called the revival meetings, like big crusades, miracles, uh, things like that. I was always passionate about evangelism. But similar to uh, Nathaniel, I think when I went to university, I really had the question um, put in front of me, do I serve Jesus myself? Do I personally make that decision? Rather than being, obviously growing up you're within the community of believers, when you go to university, it's a bit more diverse. You come out of your Christian household and then you come to your own kind of personal decision. Do you want to follow Jesus? And through that, you come to learn more about Jesus and, and faith. And then when I went to university, that's when I learned more about who Jesus was, about love. And I learned about uh, faith and social justice, which I never um, understood or um, it was never, that message was never delivered to me growing up as a, as, as a, as a schoolboy. So through, through university, and through that encounter I had with God, um, then I made that decision myself to personally, personally follow wow. Jesus. And it's, it's, it's been definitely a journey, uh, learning more about who Jesus is, learning about faith and politics, and learning about our responsibility as Christians, not only um, within our own Christian communities, but within wider communities. And it's all, it's all come at a good time. So through university, post-uni, um, obviously we'll talk about Buxton, my faith has grown because my knowledge of Jesus has grown. And it's been, it's been amazing, definitely been testing. Um, I think uh, the Bible talks about whoever comes, whoever wants to come after me must deny, deny yourself. So definitely a lot of uh, things um, has involved about me denying myself, humbling myself up, and uh, pushing forward with responsibilities. But yeah, that's how I've come to faith in Jesus Christ. A Mucky Business with Tim Farron. We're talking to Jonathan Akindatire, Mim Schluter and Nat Taylor, all of whom work for MPs in different ways. Uh, Jonathan, let's come back to you. Yeah. You're working now in the Vauxhall constituency office of Florence Eshalomi, the MP, Labour MP for Vauxhall. You worked in Parliament last year when you were with Stephen Timms. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what you do in your current role. So in my current role, I'm a caseworker. I'm based in the constituency office. Um, so every day um, I'm checking Florence's inbox, um, constituents writing to Florence about various issues, uh, housing, um, immigration issues, um, cost of living crisis. It could be it could be anything. It could be anything. So um, when constituents write to Florence, I'll, I'll pick up in their inbox, and they can come through emails. 
uh, telephone. And we also hold uh, surgery, surgery appointments with constituents. And what we do, we do our best to assist uh, constituents, um, um, liaising with the council, other third party agencies, uh, ministerial departments. And the whole idea is um, a, a big part of an MP's role is actually to, uh, to serve constituents. I learned that with Stephen as well. Stephen's a very much a constituency MP like Florence. And um, every day um, I try my best to just uh, serve Florence and the constituents of Vauxhall. And you'll be dealing with some often very upsetting cases. I know from my own uh, casework post bag, you're dealing with people whose lives are uh, in extreme difficulty and often the MP is the place of the last resort. And how does that feel having to deal with people who are potentially at their lowest point? Yeah, definitely, Tim, you're spot on. A lot of people do come to uh, the MP as a last resort. They've tried everything. And uh, that's where my faith comes in. Uh, the compassion, compassion comes in. And, uh, you know, Jesus had compassion on many people and that kind of um, drove um, him every day. And when you when we do come with sensitive cases, I definitely use compassion um, with constituents and try to be with them through their situation. Um, because like, like you said, Tim, uh, the most uh, constituents come as a last resort and it's important that we do the best we can um, to assist constituents in that, in that yeah, in their situation. Well, thank you. Let, let's move on now to talk to all three of you about how you got to what you're doing now. Um, so Mims and Nat, you both came through the CARE programme, Christian Action Research Education, a charity. And one of the things that they do is that they run an internship scheme every year for young people, young Christians to work with, um, broadly speaking, Christian MPs. And Jonathan, uh, you worked, came in through the Buxton Partnership uh, Programme, a um, similar scheme. And I can say as an MP, I've, I've had wonderful interns from both over the years. So let's start off with you, Mims. Tell us a little bit about how you came to be on the scheme that you are. Yeah, um, thanks, Tim. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do after uni. Um, I, every time people ask me to you know, say what I'm passionate about, I would say I love people. Um, and I love Jesus and so I wanted to find something to do after uni that kind of honoured those two passions um, and I think I never I really never had considered politics to be honest um, I yeah kind of grew up not really wanting to get involved not really kind of talking much about it in South Africa it was a conversation on everyone's lips um, and similarly at uni here but I kind of just thought oh it's a bit complicated and I don't really understand it um, and then I I would say that, um, yeah, kind of, I came across um, the leadership program um, and kind of thought, wow, oh, this would be a great opportunity to kind of um, really study um, a lot of what God has to say about politics um, and what God has to say about people um, and also have a great kind of exposure to what it would be like and ultimately just learn. Um, and so, I yeah applied to the leadership program and um, I got on so I do that on a Friday um, and then they helped facilitate my placement with Danny um, which is what I do now and yeah I'm really really enjoying it loving learning um, so much about what goes on here and I think it has definitely started um, this passion in me um, to not only serve Danny ultimately but also serve his constituents who he is serving um, and I think yeah my faith and this place of um, fighting and finding justice um, is a great place to do that. Thanks, Mims. Nat, you're on the same programme, um, but tell us a little bit about how you got to be where you are now. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so I, I actually initially started studying uh, geology at university, so maybe that should be a question what a geologist is doing in Parliament as opposed to a Christian, but here I am. Um, I, I, I picked that because to be honest, it was a very well-paid degree after leaving university. Um, but at university, as I mentioned, uh, that's when I think my faith started to become a, a real outworking in my life. And I found that geology just didn't really satisfy um, that, that newfound desire. I guess my interest went from being uh, in the ground to, to raining on high. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, There's yeah. an autobiography there, Nat. That sounds a great, great <laughs> yeah. opening line. Yeah. yeah um so so yeah and and as i as i as, as jonathan said as my faith grew and i started to read the bible more and more um in my my interest developed between the clash of faith and culture um 
and, and how Christians were supposed to respond to that. Um, and, and we know as Christians that Christ's actions are cosmic and final. So, so we're, we're so secure in the fact that Christ won the battle. But I suppose if, if you use the, the, the image of ourselves, our individual walks with Christ, we're still growing. Christ can still continue to transform culture um, today. And so I basically have started looking around and ways to engage with that. I think politics, um, where we, well, politicians create laws that affect society, affect culture, um, was, a, was a brilliant place to, to look at. So then I looked to care, um, where you get a placement in parliament and, and basically an opportunity to start to learn the practicalities of how that works. It's, you know, I'm, I'm only just out of uni. I can't say I know much, but it's, but I'm here surrounded by parliamentarians, seeing how our um, legislation is created, seeing how Christian MPs um, live uh, and work. And there's, and there's a remarkably high, like high number of Christians in, in parliament, which is super encouraging. Um, and they, they work in so many different ways. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's how I ended up, ended up working here. Wonderful. Thanks. Now let's just finish with you, Jonathan. You're on a slightly different program, uh, yeah. the Buxton <clears throat> program. Tell us how you got into that and how that worked out for you. Yeah, so I was always uh, passionate about social justice. Um, I studied law and international relations at uni. And I think it was about 2019, I attended a Just Love event. And it was, um, the topic was pursuing uh, the biblical call to social justice. So that was the first time I saw faith and social justice, faith and politics come together. It was like, it was like a light bulb effect. After that, I attended the Justice Conference. I heard Andy Flanagan singing. Um, and then from there was a slow journey, um, uh, or, yeah, steps towards faith and uh, politics. So post university, after I finished my degree, um, I just wanted to um, just spend some time volunteering with, within my local community. But I also volunteered with uh, Christian in politics. So I volunteered, I was part of the Young Christian in Politics Board. And I was basically, my role was to raise awareness um, around politics and Christian in politics, but also encourage other young Christians despite um, political backgrounds, they engage in politics. And then um, the Buxter coordinator at the time, Miriam, she came and done a workshop about community organizing, which is essentially uh, working in local communities, bringing grassroots organizations uh, to work on issues in the area. I was so fascinated about this. And obviously Buxton um, uh, programs is a Christian program, raising Christian leaders in politics. And then uh, it was just another light bulb moment. And I felt God calling me to this program. And that's how I got into the Buxton program when I was working with uh, Stephen Timms. I was his diary manager and also working with a church in East London. And it's definitely shaped me and definitely more than me uh, to who I am today. Hence why I'm continuing with Florence and Shalomi as a, a caseworker. It's fascinating to hear from all of you. And I wish we had loads longer. I should share, I should be clear that I think the care internship program for this coming academic year, I think is closed. But if you want to apply for future years, um, please consider it. For the Buxton programme, I think the uh, applications are still open, but not for long. So you need to get your application in, in the next couple of weeks. If you want details, just email us at Premier and we'll send them to you about both programmes. I feel we haven't done this justice. It's been brilliant to talk to all three of you. Uh, you've given wonderfully of yourselves and um, I feel we, there's lots more we could we, we talk about. So we might get you back on again individually, who knows? But, but for the time being, Mims, Nat and Jonathan, absolute joy to have you with us. Have a wonderful day and thank you for what you do. Each week, we give you the opportunity for you to ask any question you'd like about this mucky business of politics. It may be how an aspect of this world impacts us Christians who work within it, or maybe there's a particular issue that you're struggling to make sense of. Well, I'd love to hear from you and attempt an answer. Now, I must add that my pot of questions is a little bit smaller than we'd like, so please add to it by dropping me an email to farron at premier.org.uk, and there is a very strong chance that I'll be answering it on an episode over the next few weeks. Well, this week, Jeff in London has been in touch and he asks the following. From a political point of view, how difficult would it be for the Church of England to be disestablished from the state? Well, another time I'll tell you why I generally think that the Church of England should be disestablished. I guess I think it from a political point of view, from a theological point of view and from a church tradition as a 
member of a non-conformist low church um, point of view. But what would happen if we did? And it wouldn't be consequence free. So the Church of England is the established church, the established religion of England and to a degree, therefore, for the United Kingdom. And I explain what I mean by that to a degree. First of all, the monarch is the head of the church. If we disestablish the church, one assumes that they would not be. Therefore, who would crown the monarch? It wouldn't be the Archbishop of Canterbury, probably. Uh, there would perhaps be some form of a secular ceremony or at least a multi-faith ceremony. You've also then got the fact that we currently have bishops sitting in the House of Lords. I'm certain that that would end as a consequence of the Church of England being dis disestablished if it was. We then have all sorts of bits of what I might call furniture uh, and decoration of the state that the church provides. So parliamentary days begin in the House of Commons and in the House of Lords with prayers. I suspect that that would end. So we might well see a steady withdrawal then of the church in visible places in public life. So even for those of us who kind of think in principle that disestablishment is a good idea, maybe we should be a little bit careful because the consequences might be very far reaching. If you have a question for Tim, email farron at premier.org.uk. Well, let's end our time together this week in prayer. First of all, Father, we come before you and we lift up to you the country and the people of Ukraine. We pray for justice. We cry out to you against the aggressor uh, and ask that you would bring justice to bear upon them. Um, nevertheless, that you would show mercy and that there would be repentance from those who've been the aggressors, that you would also uh, bring those who have been oppressed, those who are the victims, to turn to you, knowing you are their true source of liberation. But we pray for peace. We pray for an end to this war. We pray that you'd meet those who are in need, that you comfort those who grieve, that you give wisdom to those who lead. Uh, bring an end to this war, we ask you, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up to you Nat, and Mims and Jonathan, who have been with us this week. We thank you for their service uh, of communities that their MPs represent. We thank you for bringing young people into Parliament through the Care Scheme and the Buxton Programme. Uh, we pray that you would continue to draw uh, great young people, believers in your name, faithful believers, into Parliament through those schemes and others. And we just pray for young people in this country as a whole, that they might have their hearts softened to hear the gospel and to turn to you, Lord Jesus. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this week's show. Don't forget, you can catch up on past episodes, which feature interviews with party leaders, former government ministers and MPs from all the major parties. Just search for a mucky business on your chosen podcast provider or head to premierchristianradio.com forward slash a mucky business. See you soon.